Hello everyone, uh, I'm Dr. Juwad, I'm a local chiropractor in the area, and what I want to thank you for, first of all, I want to thank you for coming in on a Saturday and allow me to do this talk. I hope you enjoy it, and due to the time constraint, because there's a speaker after me, um, let's just do the questions at the very end, okay? So what I want to talk about is the back pain diet. Now I put this together specifically for if you're not, if you're in pain on the weekends and if your doctor's not available and because I get a lot of times when people call me up on a Saturday or Sunday and they're in pain and they want to see me but I don't work on Saturday or Sundays. So I put this little PowerPoint together to explain what you can do on your own food wise to help decrease your inflammation uh, to avoid one, to avoid being in pain and also two, to lessen the chances of being further in pain. Okay, so recommendations for your diet to reduce pain. So the back pain diet, it's, per, I put, it's perfect for everyone. Why? Because in this program, you're simply changing some of the things that you eat. Eating is something that we do every single day, and it's, the, it's actually it's the quality of the food items that we're putting in our system. So making modifications to your diet adds little to no work in your already busy life. So all you got to do is just change the food choices that you're putting in your body. Okay, and before I start, I know there's gonna be a lot. Of, there's gonna be a lot of moans because you're gonna hear a lot of things that you don't want to hear, <laughs> but that's okay. So how diet affects pain? It's very very simple. It affects it from because you're either eating it, you're eating eating your way for inflammation, and or what you're doing is that you're slowing down the blood flow through the arteries, which is causing you pain. So inflammation, often pain is due secondary to inflammation that your body experiences. So pain and inflammation, they go hand in hand. So certain foods can increase this inflammation while others could help reduce it. So I always tell my patients, either you're eating your way to inflammation or if you just make several choices, you could lower, you could lower inflammation just by modifying your diet. So certain cells in your body, such as fat cells, are believed to, to facilitate the production of more inflammatory factors, thus weight loss not only decreases mechanical stress in the body, it also helps to decrease overall inflammation. So again, so the more, the more fat cells have on, your, have on your body, fat cells are toxic. So what it does, it also adds to inflammation because how did you get that way? You ate it. So certain foods and, di certain foods and diet can increase your body's levels of bad cholesterol as well as increase your level of arthrosclerosis. So again, this is decreasing the blood flow. So the arthrosclerosis theory of back pain states that a blocked artery impairs, in your, impairs your body's ability to heal back injuries and eliminate pain. A blocked artery. So blocked lumbar arteries can contribute greatly to intensity and the duration of pain. So a favorite place for these plaques to form is right at the opening near the lumbar arteries. Your lower back, the arteries get clogged and this is where you get extensive amount of low back pain. Now, the question is, for an example, um, sitting for long periods of time, have you ever experienced low back pain from sitting? Yes or yes. So, yeah, blocked arteries near, in the lumbar area, which is your lower back, causes pain and discomfort. So, by the age of 20, nearly 10% of people have, par have a partially clogged artery. And this percentage increases with age. So, if a lumbar artery is blocked, blood cannot reach your painful back. So what happens, and this is an example of a blocked artery, so you can see the artery is like a tube um, and then plaques are formed in the line of the artery. Now the plaques are formed due to either stress or in, you know, stress inflammation and or diet. Eating bad diets, polyunsaturated fatty acids, actually makes the blood thicker and a thick blood going through your pipeline will tend to nick it and then with the repair process, plaques are formed. So as a plaque grows, it narrows the tube. It plugs the arteries. It doesn't necessarily clog the arteries, it actually plugs it. So as it plugs up over time, you can see how the, pla the plaque ruptures and then the blood clot forms, limiting blood flow. So this is a causation of a lot of low, low back pain as well. So for the arthrosclerosis theory of back pain, a study was done, published in the journal Spine, found that those with chronic pain were much more likely to have high cholesterol and blocked arteries, okay? And then this is, this is an example of eating your way to pain. So what foods, so what, foods, so what food choices are giving you pain? Some foods increase inflammation. That, again, this is the foods that actually hurt. These are your saturated fats and your trans fats. I'll go over that in a minute. So which ones, again, decrease inflammation? 
Foods rich with an omega-3, vitamin D as a supplement or foods rich in, in vitamin D, especially D3 content, and take in antioxidants. That will help uh, uh, unclog the arteries, which will help decrease pain. So inflammatory foods, sugar from any source, Processed foods, this is your french fries, white bread, ice cream, cheeses, fast foods, pastas, cheddar cheeses. I know this is all the food that you guys eat on a daily basis, which is a standard American diet. Right or right? Okay, there you go. Okay, these are your snack foods. Walking in here, I saw the vending machine just full of snack foods, and all I said was, oh my goodness, this is all just nothing but inflammation. You guys are eating it, see, right, right, right there. What are those, are those Funyuns? Yeah. Yes, okay, Funyuns. <laughs> nothing good about Funyun except the taste. Oil, such as vegetable and corn oil, soda, caffeine, and alcohol. That monster drink you're, you're drinking right there, that is full of inflammation. It is. So, anti-inflammatory foods. What are the foods that could decrease inflammation? This is your anything wild caught fish, like salmon, fresh whole fruits, lean poultry, green tea, your dark green, greafy lean vegetables, your multicolored vegetables, turmeric and ginger, nuts, water, olive oil. Taking in all these food products will help decrease inflammation on its own. Your plate on a daily basis should be very, very, very colorful, okay? Very, very colorful. So, Let's go into saturated fat foods. So, a study was done in the Journal of the American Cardi College of Cardiology showed that just one high saturated fat meal increases inflammation. This is where you increase inflammation by eating. It appears that saturated fats increase inflammation by impairing your body's natural anti-inflammatory process. You're actually stopping the way how your body heals by the food choices you eat. Okay? So the amount of eicosanoids that your body produces is proportional to the amount of saturated fats that you eat. So these cause inflammation. And these are all saturated fats. So it also increases your levels of, of total cholesterol and the LDL, which is considered the bad cholesterol. Thus increasing your risk of atherosclerosis, the clogging of the tubular arteries. So easy ways to lower the saturated fats. Choose lean meats like chicken or fish instead of por beef and pork because it's, they tend to have a ton of saturated fat. At restaurants, choose the baked, broiled, or grilled instead of fried foods. Make better choices when you're at the restaurant. What I do is that when I'm going out to dinner or going out, uh, going out to eat, I just look at the grilled section. I bypass all the good stuff. I bypass all the fried stuff. My way of eating is very, very bland. You, you're not going to like it. But, again, I want to choose foods that will decrease my inflammation as opposed to increasing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, sauces and gravies are loaded with saturated fats. Avoid them and ask for them on the side. When I have a salad, the only time I have Thousand Island is when I go out to eat, and I have Thousand Island on the side of my salad. Okay? So, when choosing salad, oil, try oil-based dressings versus ranch or blue cheese. So this is now this is the other type of fat. This is the trans fat, which is actually more deadly. Okay, about 30 years ago, uh, conspiracy theorists they say that butter's bad, margarine's better. Now, 30 years later, after decades of eating margarine, now we realize that margarine is bad for you. Margarine's a trans fat, so it's even more dangerous. So the mechanism, this, so the mechanism for this is essentially the same as saturated fats, clogging arteries and increasing inflammation. They go a step further by not only increasing the low-density lipoproteins, but decreasing the good cholesterol. We want a nice balance of low-density lipoproteins, which is the bad cholesterol, and the good cholesterol. So when you actually decrease the good cholesterol, you're increasing the chance of clogging the arteries, which is not a good thing. So avoid this cholesterol, this double whammy. So where are we getting these trans fats? Using shortening, vegetable shortening, animal products, 21%, salad dressing, big, Breakfast cereal, here it is. Margarine, margarine 17% trans fat. Fried potatoes, french fries. The only thing good about french fries is the taste, right. Potato chips, corn chips, popcorn, the vending machine outside. Cakes, cookies, crackers, pies, bread is all 40%. Again, all this is yummy food, but again, you're, you're, you're eating your way to inflammation. 
Trans fat, a study conducted at Harvard University, which appeared in the Journal of Nutrition, set out to find where, whether trans fat simply increases cholesterol or whether it's also pro-inflammatory, cause inflammation. So they found out the more trans fats someone ate, what happens, the more inflammation that's happening to their body. This association was independent of other possible causes of inflammation, example, saturated fat intake or, or obesity. So now that I told you how you're damaging your body on a daily basis, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you some good news and tell you how to heal it. Omega-3 fish oils are the gem of anti-inflammatory. Extensive research indicates that omega-3 fatty acids reduce inflammation, help prevent risk of help, um, help prevent risk factors associated with chronic disease. Because the healthy cell membrane is dependent on omega-3 fatty acids. So omega-3s are good. They also reduce the risk of coronary artery disease. They reduce blood triglycerides. Now triglycerides, what that is, blood triglycerides, that's the amount of fat in the blood. Okay? How do you get fat in the blood? You eat fat. It reduces the risk of certain cancers as well because again, it reduces inflammation. Decreases chronic inflammation. It just goes on. This just goes, this just, this just goes on. This goes on and on and on and on. So it decreases chronic inflammation, reduces Crohn's disease, which again, it's a, that's an autoimmune in the, in the gut, the flare-ups, increases the good cholesterol and re increases cell flu uh, fluidity. So what are omega-3 fatty acids? There's three types. I'm not going to try to murder the names of these, okay? Because even these are hard for me to pronounce. But I just abbreviate them with EPA, DHA, and ALA. So omega-3s are a type of fat categorized, I'm sorry, omega-3s are a type of fat categorized as a central fatty acid. It's called this because unlike other types of fat, fats, your body cannot make omega-3s on its own. We make a lot of fat on our own, but we can't make these. Remember, these are anti-inflammatory. So the EPA and DHA are the best choices because your body turns these into active anti-inflammatory compounds better than ALA. And new research published in the journal of Science and Neurology showed a safe alternative to NSAIDs, anti-inflammatories. This is your Tylenols, your Aleves, your Aspirins, your Motrins, all those NSAIDs, even the prescription forms, this is much better and the journals are proving it. So they gave fish oil capsules instead of NSAIDs to patients. 80% of the patients were satisfied with their improvement and 88% 88, 88 said that they would con continue taking the supplements. Now, here's a question for you guys. Why would you continue taking omega-3s? Simply because it's anti-inflammatory. So the best non-fish sources of omega-3s, this is your flax seeds, your walnuts, tofu for the vegetarians, beans, winter squash. So now you talk about omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. So the typical omega-6 to omega-3 ratio in the average American diet is about 15 to 1. So research, research is not clear on what the best ratio is of these two fatty acids. However, current most recommendations should be as close as 1 to 1 as possible. Okay. So now I want to talk about vitamin D. Vitamin D, I did a previous video on vitamin D. Vitamin D is actually not a vitamin, it is a pro-hormone that is essential for the formation of hormones in our body as well as powerful anti-inflammatories. So it's a unique, it has a, the unique property of being made in your skin with the help of sunlight. This is why it's commonly referred to as a sunshine vitamin. We take in vitamin D, converts in our skin, actually it's converted to vitamin D through cholesterol in our liver and our kidneys. Okay, that's why we need a healthy liver and kidneys. So vitamin D deficiency is, is an uncategorized ep epidemic in both children and adults throughout the world. What vitamin D does, a lot of things. Cell growth, it helps cells grow. When you have, when you have, when you have healthy cells growing, you're gonna have a healthy body. Insulin resistance, it helps with a di become less diabetic. Helps with your immune factors, immunity muscle function, nervous system function, vitamin D, phenomenal for the brain. It, because it influences the nervous system, what it does influences the cardiovascular system, blood pressure, phenomenal for inflammation and low back pain. So adequate vitamin D levels are essential as an anti-inflammatory. Studies that published in the journal Spine show that not only were the majority of back pain patients in the study of vitamin D deficient, 
However, that, that the vitamin D was an effective treatment of their back pain. So right now what they're doing is that we're taking omega-3s and now we're taking omega-6s with changing the diet to help reduce your back pains and also do overall pain. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, cool. The one guy in the back, thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. Somebody's listening. <laughs> so scientific papers tested 300 patients. 83 of the patients with low back pain were vitamin D deficient. Remarkably, 95% of the patients saw a significant improvement in their back pain right after taking the vitamin D supplements. Isn't that amazing? You have low back pain. They give you vitamin D supplements. All of a sudden your low back pain and other, other aches and pains are decreasing. Increased muscle function, brain function. So how can it improve, improve back pain? It reduces the inflammation, improves nerve function, it increases the muscle strength, the muscle function. When we have increased muscle function, what that does, it actually decreases the pain fiber, fibers from firing. So next, antioxidants. <clears throat> what the heck are antioxidants? Okay, there are a lot of things. Most importantly, they fight free, free radicals. Now, another question is, what the heck are free radicals? They're shown as reactive oxygen species, ROS, and are molecules in your body that are abnormal. What they are, they are simply the byproduct or, of normal cellular function. Antioxidants to your body is kind of like the carbon monoxide your car gives off. So when you turn on the car, the car is running, it's a byproduct. Free radicals are just that. Unfortunately, they build up in your body and you need the use of antioxidants to help rid your body of these free radicals. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So new research has shown that unchecked free radicals are a major instigator of back pain and that antioxidants will reduce this pain. So now, let's backtrack. Omega-3s, vitamin D, 3, and now antioxidants. And reducing the sugars, watching the trans fats, watching the saturated fats, right then and there, that's the equation for less pain overall, especially low back pain. So reducing sensitivity to pain, free radicals have been shown to turn on nerves and increase back pain sig signaling. So what happened is, again, in inflammation reduction pre and prevents clogged arteries by taking antioxidants. So these are top 10 antioxidant-containing foods. You get anything from small red beans, again, red beans, blueberries, kidney beans, pinto beans, blueberries, cranberries. Blueberries and cranberries and raspberries, every morning what I do when I have my protein shake, I just throw a couple raspberries and blueberries in my protein shake for, and spin them around for my antioxidants. Or just by having them, just eat them by hand. You want to take about a palm-sized hand, handful of berries and eat them separately or throw them in your salad or whatever. That's good to help your antioxidants. Artichokes, blackberries, prunes. Not only prunes are good phenomenal antioxidants, prunes are good for what? Fiber. So if you're constipated, you take what? Fibers. There you go. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I got you. All right. So other pain, other pain eliminators. This is your vitamin B complex. These are glucosamine sulfate with chondroitin. These are phenomenal joint supplements. Capsaicin, the, capsaicin, I'm sorry, that's phenomenal also too as an anti-inflammatory. Magnesium, um, what it does, it acidic blood, it makes all, also insulin resistant. And ginger extract, what that does, as again, it helps with the, with the anti-pain uh, inflammatory uh, mechanisms in our body, okay? So again, thank you for, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Dr. Juwad. My website is www.totalhealththepage.com. My phone number is 630-653-2225. I'm in the area. And uh, any questions? Uh, yeah. Okay, sorry about that. The, the microphone went out, actually the receiver. So with playback, we're starting this. This is why it stopped. And the audio is going to be a little bit different because I have to talk over instead of using the mic. Okay, so uh, any questions? There was a question in the back. Yeah, uh, can you please explain the difference between omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids? Yeah, uh, omega, the question is, can you please explain the difference between omega-6 fatty acids and omega-3 fatty acids? So the biggest difference is omega-3 fatty acids, those are pro, um, no, I'm sorry, those are anti-inflammatory. 
Whereas omega six sixes are pro-inflammatory, which actually which means that, that they cause inflammation. Okay. So we need a healthy balance of two, usually a one-to-one -one ratio, because how the body repairs itself, the body has to break down and repair itself at the same time. So if there's too much body breakdown and not enough repair, this is where we get weakness, okay, like brittle bones and so forth and so on, or weak muscles. Now to flip it over, if we have too much repair and not enough breakdown, this is where we get like hardening, like, you know, hard bones. So we do need a healthy balance between omega-3s and omega-6s. However, the standard American diet is loaded in omega-6s, which that means that we're eating our way to inflammation. There's too, much in, there's too much bad fatty acids in our system clogging the arteries, causing inflammation. So the standard American diet is causing that, which on the average is about a, it's, it, we should be at a one-to-one -one ratio, whereas most of us are walking around eating a 50-to-one ratio. So we're just, this is where we're causing too much inflammation between omega-6 and omega-3s. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yeah, what about the turmeric? Okay, turmeric, good question. Uh, turmeric, I did a previous video on turmeric. Turmeric is a phenomenal, nominal herb. It's also actually, it's actually a spice. Uh, turmeric is a very powerful anti-inflammatory as well. It helps with a lot of things with the inflammatory cascade. It helps with uh, making, your, making you less insulin resistant, so it's good for diabetes, it's good for heart disease, it's good as a, almost as an anti-cancer agent. You can either take turmeric in liquid form, I sell it in liquid form in my office. Um, I, you could also take it in pill form. You could sprinkle it on your food, it's, it's, it's a spice, so turmeric is a phenomenal anti-inflammatory as well. Um, the dosage of turmeric is really, it's based on your level of inflammation. Usually, I forgot how many milligrams per pill it is, but I usually recommend anywhere taken from about six pills, that's two pills three times a day, because really, if you're the average person, you are just laden with inflammation, so you really cannot take enough turmeric. However, taking too much turmeric will increase your chances of having kidney stones, so make sure you, you uh, balance it out with taking an adequate amount of water. Okay? Any other questions? Uh, yeah. Which vitamin Bs are essential for health? Okay, so the question is, because I talked about taking a vitamin B complex. The most important vitamin B that we need in our system, okay, is vitamin B6, vitamin B9, which is the form of folate, uh, folate, and vitamin B12, okay? So vitamin B6 is phenomenal for the nervous system function, the brain function to help calm down the brain to help uh, increase serotonin production, which we, again, that's the calming hormone. The whole B vitamin profile is, is good for the nervous system anyways. Uh, vitamin B9, which is folate, taken in, converted to folic acid, as well as B12, that's good for gut, gut, uh, gut breakdown for food products. The problem is when we have a bad digestion, we're not breaking down uh, vitamin B9 and B12 effective enough, so we're causing an inflammatory process that's gut related because we're not absorbing those, particularly especially B12, and this is where you get a condition called pernicious anemia. You're not getting enough uh, like iron chunk into the blood. So, does that make sense? Oh, um, usually in vitamin forms, I always recommend taking again a vitamin B supplement, supplement on its own. Instead of taking a folic acid, I'm sorry, folate and vitamin B12, because what happens is that how we break down things in our, in our body, it's called a methylation process. Don't worry about that name. So a lot of times when you have poor digestive health, you can't break down those vitamins effectively. So I always recommend to patients that to take the, what's called methylfolate and methyl B12. That means that's already broken down. So it's already broken down before you take it. So when you actually ingest it, it's already broken down. So, so it's better to absorb in your system. Okay, does that, make, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, any other questions? Uh, All right, okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it.